Does she come back onto our map? She does, yeah. So then she, um... Is she gargantuan too? So she's not actually that big. This is mostly for dramatic effect. Um, I believe she is only considered to be like huge size right now, but this looks so much better on the map, so. That is an awesome token. Where'd you get that from? Um, I looked really long and hard. I'll have to get back to you on it. Um, it was, uh, yeah, shoot. I'll have to get back. I want to credit the artist, but I don't want to take too much time from the session. So I'll... No worries. I just thought it was super detailed. I will search my pirated token collection and see if I also have it. Okay. Um, I, I, I tried to find the ugliest beholder I could find. This was the one. I was like orange and purple, and then like each eye stalk is a different color. Yeah, yeah that's that's just okay. So she makes her way up. She can. Let's see here. So I get think what she's going to do is this round. She did a double move to get here, so that's both of her move actions. But she still has Swiss and her freeze. So she's going to use her free actions to reactivate several of her buffs that went away. And so she's going to, um, like with her other attacks, she's basically going to shoot these into the mirrors, reflect them back to hit herself. So you guys will see her shooting rays that come back to hit her. And then once she's satisfied with that, she's going to do um, fire a single ray out of the, uh, through the new lens that she's picked up in the direction of Aerodaver. So first of all, um, Aerodaver is close enough that um, he has to make a fortitude save um, if he can see the Gorgon, the Medusa's head. So let's start with that. Okay, so he does endure that shit. Um, and then, she hits him with, she fires out of her ray, in effect, and then Aerodaver needs to make a reflex save. That is uh, at least two higher, not that I think that's going to be good enough. It is good enough, since the DC for this is not based on her spells or other abilities, but based off the items DC, which is low. <laughs> so actually, you do avoid. So she basically fires one of her eye rays into the lens. The lens projects it out um, in an area, and she tries to um, hit everything in a cone in front of her out to the length of her that ray, I guess. Yeah, I'm looking for the range on this. It doesn't say. The length of a ray? 150 feet? Most rays Something are short. Like she has so a... If it's, if it's anything like the Eye of the Beholder spell, it's all these effects have a range of 150 feet. Yeah, so basically, it's everything down this line, which would hit... Um, the ooze. So I, yeah, it would hit the ooze and Aerodavar and Cerberard. I don't think it hits Vesper, though. She's just outside of it. Um, but yeah, so it would hit the ooze, so the ooze needs to make it, and Cerberard needs to make the save as well. So the ooze is going to do it. Cerberard can get the nat 20. And like, okay. when you get a chance, look in the chat. I got Volgana for you. No, that's nice. Blind belt. But that's just... Yeah, so, see, I wanted to find a blind one. But, yeah. Okay. Photoshop or a black X over the eye. Oh, is that it? That's what you could do. Oh, I could do. Um, okay, because it's supposed to be that she gouged out her eye, so the red eye was the best I could do for yeah. the token. Um, okay, so... 
all of you guys managed to dodge the blast, so that's nice. So she, you realize that she essentially tried to use a dispel effect to dispel away your various enchantments that are protecting you from her eye rays. However, she fails to do that, and you're all safe. I laugh. Frustrated by this, she will try again. So she can do this up to three times, and she will. So you guys can make two more sets of saves to see if any of these three eye rays... No, she can only do it once per round with the lens, right? So she can't do that. Um, that is what it says, right? So it says... Yep. So yeah, she can only do that once per round, so that sucks. So then she is pretty furious, and she's going to take it out by firing on this steel predator, which she now realizes is an enemy. And so she will fire two rays off of that. Those will hit. And needs to make his fort saves. Ay, ay, ay. Okay. So then I believe that's just going to be. So she takes some pretty big chunks out of that steel predator there, enough to bloody it, but it is still standing after getting hit with two of her attacks. Um, then we move to Vesper. Ah! Okay. I don't want to be in the eye ray. <laughs> Come into the light. There's peace and serenity in the light. Mm. We need flanking, okay. man. We need flanking. Yes, I know. <laughs> scared. Too bad men you so couldn't scared. have died closer. Go there. Oh god. Alright. So when Vesper moves us there, she needs to make a fortitude save as well. Oh no. That's not good. Definitely gonna fail. <laughs> Can't you like avert your eyes from the thingy? You can. If you're aware of the effect, you can well, avert your eyes, giving you a fifty percent chance, or close your eyes completely. But then you're walking blind. Well, we've all been hearing about this. Or were we not aware of the Gorgon's head? So you guys didn't move very close to her in the first part of the battle. And Manu was immune. So actually, you didn't necessarily know until somebody had identified it. Um, Manu didn't identify it when he was in the maze. And I think he told people about it. What? But he couldn't have done that until he was out of the maze. I guess he did when he got out. Yeah. Yeah, he got out, and then he came over to where everyone was, and then he almost died again. So that's why when okay. he ran away, he did talk to everyone and relay everything he had. Okay. Sorry, my throat's being a bit <clears throat> But yeah, he did have a chance to talk to everyone and stuff. Okay. Then, um... So what do I do? Avert so... your eyes. You can avert your eyes, so it's like you try not to look at the Gorgon's head, the Medusa. Um, okay. So you have a 50% I'll... chance to just avoid it for that. <laughs> okay, I'll just like hold my hand in front of my eyes <laughs> and look down. Okay. I can't you see can you. Also... <laughs> yeah, you, you can also completely close your eyes, but then you're blinded effectively. Uh, so yeah. you no, can I fight and blind and stuff. So. I want okay. to. <laughs> so high or low for the 50 chance? High. It is low. So then you still need to make your fortitude save. Yeah. You're trying really hard, but... Yeah. You know, you're like... It's just, she's so beautiful, I have to look at her. Uh... I just take a peek. <laughs> Alright. Do you want to re-roll that or add your charmed life bonus to it? Yeah. 
What does the charmed life bonus give me? It gives you your charisma bonus uh, to save as an immediate action four times a day. Oh, I didn't know I had that charisma bonus. That's a plus four. I'd re-roll it first. Yeah, re-roll. Okay, goodbye, fate point. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Uh, I don't think one failed save is world ending. It's fine. Yeah, I'll be fine. Okay. So you take it. So you are um, slowed this round as your feet, you can feel the toes in your feet beginning to turn to stone. Oh, oh boy. Does that mean she doesn't get an attack? She's just slowed. So it's once she comes into range, she's slowed. She came into range um, about half halfway through that. So maybe she would, it would take a few more units of movement, but otherwise she gets still do her attack. Okay. Attack the dude. <laughs> hey, we're flanking and they don't seem to be protecting bad. themselves. Okay. Yep, they're not really defending themselves. Um, I mean, it's it's got a shield raised, and it's going to try, I guess, to deflect one of these attacks. Alright, so it will succeed this time. So as it succeeds, it takes a five-foot step away from Vesper. So since she moved, she just loses her second two attacks, unless she can hit with re reach, which I guess she can with her style. Um, um, I don't know, actually, because I already attacked it, once. Yeah, but you attack once, and then you can take any like free or swift actions between. So if it takes a free or a swift action, you could use that to make the thing into a... <clears throat> Reach weapon. I forget what the action is, but if it's a free or swift, you could do this and continue with your full attack. Gosh, can't find it on my character sheet. Uh, is it? I don't know. I can't find it on my sheet. That's okay. Um, well. We'll say that you missed, since I think... You know, oh, yeah, it's, it's a free action. It's a free action. Ah, okay. Okay, so then as a free action, you hook the hook swords together, and then you swing with reach. So then, here as you attack this total, the second attack is a 21 total against its AC, right? With flanking, and... I think 21 would barely miss it. <laughs> because it has a shield, so... I mean, these guys aren't pushovers, they're just not very no, offensive. Yeah, I'm oriented. just laughing because I'm just rolling really badly today. Yeah. Okay, well, that's it for Vesper, then? Yeah. Alright, so... It's back to the cellist, so it's not doing anything. We move to Dranic. All right, I'm going to waste a turn climbing. And okay. casting haste. So I'll climb, I guess, I don't know, 30 feet up to the ceiling and then 10 feet over. Okay. And that's my turn. Not going to cast haste? Can't. It took me two movements to get those 40 feet. Yes, but if you cast haste, you'll be able to move faster. Yeah, if I want to cast it on myself. No, I get I that. I thought, we were, I thought we were in range. Not yet. Not yet. That sucks. Right, right. You'll be in range next round.
Okay. Well, if you, so how high did you climb exactly? I climbed straight up the pillar, then over towards the hole 10 feet. I, I imagine that's how far it is since the ceiling was 40. So I'd already climbed partially up the pillar. Okay. Well, you can probably see well enough to be able to see onto the other map. So, so we're going to put you on the other map, knowing that you are just under the ledge rather than over the ledge. I'm sorry, wait a minute. Um, I understand what you mean. Yep. Yeah. So you'd be about right there. Um, Okay, and if that's the end for Tyrannic, then we'll continue on. This one's just going to stop fighting the uh, stuff there, and it's going to lunge at Fulgana, and it's going to try to target the head. So it's a full attack against the Gorgon head that she is using. Could they theoretically try and sunder that lens she has? In theory, yeah, with a targeted attack, but um, That'd be hard. this uh, steel predators don't have cold shot or anything, oh. and the lens is counts essentially with the same DC as an eye for cold shot purposes. Gotcha. So it's really so. Tough. I mean, yeah, it's pretty tough. But then again, it depends on exactly what her AC is, right? Because it's a modification of her AC, um, and you guys do know that she's a bit of a glass cannon. But this one's going to go after the head first. So. Yes, yeah, so the eye is a minus 10, essentially. On your attack roll against her AC. So, in this case, though, I'm going to treat this attended object as though it's just a minus, like, 5. Like, not too hard, but not trivial. Which would mean that with Volgana's defenses and it gets flanking bonus because Vesper's close enough and I guess technically Dranic is there. Does Dranic provide any sort of flanking bonus, or...? Like, does he have a melee weapon out? No. Okay. Well, then, when you get that. So it would just be the one attack. So then, we're going to do this as a CMB check. Okay, so that exactly meets it. So um, the Steel Predator basically manages to bite and grab the head and rend it from her, her telekinetic control. So now Ooh. the Steel Predator is holding the head and its crown. Does Volgana look at it? Yeah, she is pretty pissed by that. Um, she should roll a save. Oh, it should be like 10 saves, one for each eye stock, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. So she's smart enough to have a spell that grants her immunity to um, being transformed to stone. However, she is pissed for a different reason. Um, because of the crown, which was super special. Um, you guys can make some motive checks, I guess, for that. Some what so checks? Needs to grab that from the steel predator and just run. What check are we making? Sense motive, if you want. 
uh, as an off-term thing, yeah. I'd like to just occasionally roll double digits. That would be nice. Does server art have any sense motive? Yeah, sorry. I was waiting for Dranix, since he would have seen this as well. Completely yeah. off the topic, but uh, what do you do uh, when it's a TPK? Do we just make new characters and pick up where we left off? Yeah, I wonder. <laughs> In this campaign, I hadn't really thought about it. In the old campaign, it was uh, it was like an undead-themed campaign where the, there was an option for players to become undead. So my plan there was just everybody comes back as an undead version of the character. This one, though, I don't know. Um, let's just tr try to not let that happen. Um, okay. So, I guess uh, Drenik isn't going to roll, so we'll just say that the three of you can see her immediately, like, gasp or almost, like, get frustrated as she, like, several of her eyes talks turn and look at the steel predator and the head. Um, like, she's, you can tell that the head, and particularly the crown, is a very special object, and it definitely is something that she wants to keep in her possession. Is it pumpkin crown? So it doesn't look like the pumpkin crowns that you had seen. Um, it looks like a, probably the crown that's befitting of a queen of reptilian creatures. It looks almost like scaly and snake-like. You're excited by scaly things? I, I don't know. It just sounds cool. <laughs> that sounded like a very erotic ooh -hoo. No. Gross. That's what I was thinking, too. Alright. The ooze is going to attack Eridavar. Finally. You definitely have to do something about that text block. Sorry, yeah, it is huge, isn't it? Why don't I just turn it off? We, we, I look it up every time I need to see it. Yeah, the important part are the important part is none of those numbers work, so it doesn't matter what the text is. Okay. Just... So that's gone now. Okay. So yep, didn't hit. Um, as it's going after Aradavar, that's it for its turn. The zealots are. Let's see here. Well, actually, the zealot might try to do something under her direction. So this one, yes, I just remembered that. Yeah, we're going to have to finish this up pretty quickly because uh, I'm running out of uh, key points. I wonder if I can stun these Teotl. Is there any reason I couldn't do that? Um, not that you know of. So there... These guys have got... So they're going to try their best here to uh, wrest this thing away. So they, oh, they're so bad at this. So yeah, so basically two of these two will come up and they try to grab the head away from the steel predator and they fail miserably. Um, but yeah, you can see that they're desperate enough to even get these two in and trying to take this stuff. So then the doors are going to keep running in. Um, so actually, this dwarf doesn't know that you guys are immune to its uh, eye rays. So it would probably fire off a few eye rays at Aerodiver or Vesper 
and uh, they would bounce off harmlessly. One will run in this well. So it would be after she's turn, he heals another two. Checking if you're, are you there, Brad? Are you? Yep, just plugging away. I think I've only got like 60 hit points to go until I'm conscious. Yeah, I've been keeping track of it. Um, I think it's like you're 32 down or something. Yeah, I was at full hit points when I got nailed, so. Yeah, so you just need, just need like, I don't know, 16 more turns, 17. <laughs> okay. It may come um, to that. I only get I, 19 I, key points, so we can't wait that long. I sincerely hope it does not come to that. Um, Did anyone else spend three full sessions in this dungeon? Yes. The uh, so group one had uh, did the same fight the same way. It took them about three sessions to do it, full sessions. Um, group two took two sessions, but they fought her in a different way. Um, or sorry, no, group two is the one that took three. Group one took two. Yeah. I was gonna say I would expect group one to fucking jam it out. And we move to Aerodapper. Okay, I assume I'm flanking with the Steel Predator versus the Teodo? Yes, you are. Okay, well then I'm just going to wail on him. Um, this oh. stupid ooze seems basically pointless to fight. Ooh, look. Critical. Okay. And that's on my minus five hit. Yep. Nissen had already used its immediate, so it can't do it again. So then everything but the throat chop would hit. Okay. Well, he can start by making his stun attack, or stun uh, save. All right. Yeah, that sucks. And then it's got to roll against the golden ice as well, right? Uh, yeah, if it's evil, it rolls against golden ice, and then it gets sneak attack on top of that as well. Okay. So then... Okay. Fails so the second the... one, which is sweet. Yep, so it takes four dex damage from that, and then it's going to take the full damage from the rest. Holy shit, did I just do 100 points with three hits? Like that, yeah. Wow, that's not too shabby. Can't wait till our gnome gets here. Alright, it's that one's turn. It's going to try to manifest defensively here. Since it's right next to whatever. Oh, um, I have a menace, menacing stance. Gives a uh, minus four on concentrations and minus one on attacks to anyone who's adjacent to me. Okay, so then, so the total damage that it would have taken would have been about 10 points of damage. The TC is, what, uh, 
10 plus damage dealt, right? So then it would be 20 minus 4 on its check. So it would have rolled a 23 against a 20. So I think it would have succeeded. So yeah, so I think it succeeded on its concentration check. And you can see it starting to heal up and heal everything else in this collective up, but they are not at They are not at what? Uh, they are not at full uh, health. Awesome. Let's keep doing that. All right, so this one's going to charge Vesper. Um, she can try to parry if she wants. Parry. <clears throat> There's another one here that will do the same. Parry. I Ooh. taunt the midget boys. Oh, oh! So she, so she parries the first, and then for the second, <laughs> uh. she fails. Well, she actually stops the crit confirm, even on an at one there. But she, yeah, gets hit for the thirty six. So she's going to take twenty eight points of damage. Ow. I'll apply it. Oh, thank you. And then it would be Sir Berard's turn. Um, well, if you're not attacking the ooze, he doesn't see a whole lot of point in continuing to it. No, move up and start taking out the minions. Push them into the hole. Can you do, like, shield pushes? Um, he's not built for that, but I guess he, he could do it with a CMB check, and a CMB is pretty high because of his size, but I think that has a chance to kill them, which is against his code, so he wouldn't do that. Um, they would die from falling 40 feet? Well, it would deal lethal damage, which is the part of the specific part of the code that it read. So... I was just thinking, if that's true, I'll just push them all in. <laughs> Perhaps she was still in the darkness, damn it. Um, so Servar doesn't know that he needs healing, so he's going to move here. He is going Hold to on. provoke. If, Dranik, if you're up, can you communicate that Abshu is unconscious over there? I mean, I can. <laughs> okay, okay, well... Um, can you guys do anything about it? it? Not from here, but Sir Bard could try to make his way over there next round um, to do something. I mean, do we it. really want Sir Bard to kill himself on the way there? I mean, that is an option. He'll do it. That's why I don't tell him about people being hurt, because he'll kill himself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, never mind. <laughs> So you don't tell him. Um, but then he'll move up and he'll heal Vesper then. So he'll heal her up to 38, which I think will just take her to full hit points. How does he feel about knocking people unconscious and then we kill them? Um, that's fine as long as he wasn't actively killing them himself. He's just helping us kill them. Well, that's the thing. Like, So he would normally caution you against it or tell you not to, but actually he's kind of okay with um, being an accessory to murder, in a sense, as long as it's not technically a violation of his code. His code, it calls for him to do the greater good, so like he's willing to let people die or make other sacrifices for the greater good, but he's trying to follow the spirit of that as well, which involves not killing. Can he shield bash that mirror on his way by? Um, next round, I meant. Yeah, next round, maybe. We'll see. Okay, so we would be at menu. Menu is still the childlike menu on the floor. I was going to mention, I, I think the way that we'll do it is we'll say that you didn't take the charisma damage since you were drained since you shouldn't have, but we'll just leave you at one um, hit point here, essentially, in your favor fight for now. Okay, so then we move to Volgana. 
and she's going to try her trick again. She's going to aim it down so that she would hit Aerodaver, Vesper, Cerberard, and the Ooze, and technically one of her, uh, like some of her other minions as well. So all of you guys can make a save. She wouldn't oh, be no, trying wait. to get the thing back, the head? No, you are correct. She absolutely would do that. So first, she's going to fire a ray off at that thing because she is pissed off. So we're going to start with that. So that would hit. It makes its fort save. Ah, someone should have taken the head. So that's a fail. So, yeah. So she disintegrates this... Uh, Steel Predator. Didn't he, like, mangle the head? Yeah, so it grabbed the head. Um, its goal was to mostly grab the head um, away from Volgana, which it succeeded at. It did some damage to it, but not, like, uh, like fully destroyed it or anything. Um, I should have taken it off the thing. Okay, so it... I didn't have a chance. In the chance. process <laughs> of its death, um, it drops the head, and it drops the head into the hole. So, as head starts falling down the hole, I'm going to give Dranic a uh, reflex save or a sleight of hand check to grab a hold of it. I mean, sleight of hand. If I get a choice. Yep. Okay. So that's enough. So you managed to grab a hold of the head and the crown by, I guess, grabbing the snakes that are coming off of it, um, the dead snakes. Mash it against the wall. So you don't have what um. Kind of strength? Do you think I have? <laughs> so you are now in possession of it. She um looks down and. She sees the small gnome hand that grabbed a hold of the head, and she is pissed off. So she will fire another ray down in your general direction, but um, I, she can't really see you. You have more or less full cover, so she's aiming for your hand, effectively. I mean, in general, that's going to be good enough to hit anything I got. Yep, yeah, yeah. So she basically like strikes you, hits you on the wrist. But then what does she have left even? Sorry, I gotta look this up. And she's got So does it do more than just the four damage or what? No, that number isn't the damage number. I, I would put a D100 there because there's so many uh, mischance stuff involved here. Um, so that's just an automatic mischance roll in case you had to ah. or something. Up. Um, I mean, I, I do have blur up, but... Hmm. Well, let's say... Every, most of the people do, I thought. I think we've just been kind of ignoring it. Well, she does have true sight up, which is why it didn't really matter that particular effect, but there were some others like menus that would, were still in effect, so I was just rolling. That's an automatic part of the thing. Okay. Let's see here. So she's. Kind of at the bottom of the barrel for this stuff. So, yeah. So, you, you do you have a spell resistance? Nope. Okay. So, then, let's see. Okay, can you give me a will save, please? Oh yeah, does Drenic have mirror armor? I do, but it's basically useless because her touch attack is so flippin' high. 
What is the mirror armor do? All it does is allow you to use uh, your armor as touch against rays, like touch AC. So basically, for her to hit me with a ray, she has to hit a 21. What would he do? She's got like a 25 for... Yeah, well, she's got a stupid bonus right now because of the buffs, definitely. Um, okay. There's that. So I think what happens here is that she puts Drannik into a deep slumber. Hey, 40 foot fall damage. Um, you will immediately wake him up. It might, yeah. So, do you fall, or is the spider climb like you're stuck to the ceiling or something? I don't, I don't know how that works. Uh, I'm pretty sure I fall because you have to keep so many limbs attached to the wall. Uh, let's see here. Let me look up the spell I got. Okay. Can climb and travel on vertical surfaces just as well as a spider. The affected creature must have its hands free to climb in this matter. Subject can climb at 20 feet plus eight racial. Uh, Doesn't need to make climb checks. Retain my dexterity. Can't use the run action. That's all it says. Okay. Um, well, either way, I drop the head. Either I fall with it, or the head drops. Yeah. Either well, way. let's say that you fall then. So you would fall. You would take the uh, the forty feet uh, fall damage, which equates to about eighteen damage, which would wake you up. Um, but as soon as you are, a, you drop the head and you kind of fall with the head, she is going to try to cast a spell on the head itself, which is going to be a, another ray. Okay. So she'll do that. And she basically used a telekinesis ray on the head to, um, Try to pull the head back towards her. So since you are next to it again, I'll let you make a, um, a C and B, or I guess a sleight of hand check again. Okay, that's pretty good. That's her C and B. So what what is she using telekinesis as to do this? So I'm just gonna say that this is as the uh, the violent thrust ability of the telekinesis, where she's trying to violently throw it up to herself so she can range to grab with mage hand. Okay, so she, would she be grabbing all the other gold and stuff that's down there and throwing it at herself? Probably, yeah. So <laughs> probably like everything in the area. Yeah. So I think because she could do this with a sustained force, but it would be slow, right? It's up to 20 feet per round. Yeah. You know what? Actually, that makes more sense, though, because that would be too risky with a violent thrust. So what I'm going to say here is that she she uses sustained force. She starts to pull it up. She pulls it up 20 feet this round, um, but it's not yet to her or in her possession until next round. So for this round, she pulls it up 20 feet, and Dranik's sleight of hand check is enough to grab a hold of the head and kind of ride up with it. She's mildly annoyed by this, but she can only fire <laughs> one more ray down at him, so she will do so. And this ray is... Uh, he needs to make a fortitude save. The end of Dranic. All right, that is not enough. 
but fortunately, really, a twelve wasn't enough. No way. This is an inflict minor or inflict uh, moderate wounds. So you take twenty six points of damage. Oh, I'm still alive. Crazy. Yeah, crazy. Okay, we'll move to Vesper then. Oh wait, no. Uh, so Volgana tried that, uh, but she can't do. She can do the one thing through the lens. So sorry, did we already do that? No, we. So she's still going to try to do the lens thing to um, air out her Vesper or Sororad and the hoops. So she will do that now. So all of you guys can make a reflex save against that. Okay. Um, Cerberard this time he is going to you see a combat patrol up he is going to move into a position that is say it's like right there and he uh, gives you guys plus four and the benefits of evasion or improved evasion so I'm going to say can't touch that yeah Okay. Hey, that's fun. I love it when she blasts her own guys. Yeah. So what is she blast? This is the dispel thing, right? Yeah, that's right. So she tries to dispel the effect on all of them. She only hits the ooze, the Quicksilver ooze, and one of her own minions. And, yeah, two of her cultists. So you see that the eye above those cultists disappears. The ooze's haste disappears, and I guess the charm effect on it. Um, and then wouldn't he be dispelled since he summoned? Um, no, because it's a weird uh, interaction there. It's so. I I don't know if Manny would have identified this with his check, but he would have realized that these creatures that she's summoning are not the normal creatures that you get when you summon monsters. Um, all of them seem to be like replacement creatures to replacement like uh, accidental summons you could say so in that since they are permanently on this plane they are not oh so she's like sure taking them or creating yeah. them yeah so they it's it's a weird interaction where she's she can summon them to this plane and she can sort of control them but then they're also crazy and weird so okay but um interestingly that she accidentally ended the share pain on one of her teodals so she uh, no longer has that. He's no longer connected to their collective. Or he's in their collective, but they don't benefit from the share pain or anything. So I mean, she just lost a bunch of hit points. Can you in multiple collectives? You can. All right. I was going to say, I would have won us this fight instantly if you couldn't. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so now it is Vesper's turn. Okay. So this guy doesn't have the share pain thing anymore? He does not. Oh. I feel like I shouldn't attack him then. Yeah, but we wouldn't be aware of that. Yeah, you might not, not immediately realize that. Oh. It's not obvious whether or not he has the effect, but you saw that she was trying to dispel the effects. <clears throat> you saw that he got hit. You could infer that he no longer has that effect. Okay, well, I'm just going to stick with the original plan, and I will go there. Can I tumble there so those two dwarfy guys don't attack me? Yeah, you could do that. Tumbling! I would love to roll above a 10 this game. Benefit of regenerating, uh, no disappointing rolls. <laughs> That's true. Okay. I think you do provoke from these dwarves for this. So they will take their attack. Maybe each of them. Eh, okay. 
Parry away. Parry. Within reach of the ooze as well, which will try to make its attack. Man. Okay. Nope. Oh. That's nice. Yeah, so you would have paired that one pretty well, and then the next one. Okay, so you'll pair two, but you'll get hit by the one attack. Four. Just, I believe it's 11. They don't deal the extra damage in AOLs, so just 11. Ow. But did I move? You did. Okay. Really think we need to get that crown. I'll get the crown on my turn. Okay. Um, and I guess I'll attack this guy. Okay. Go. Eighteen thirty-one right. twenty-eight. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. The thirty-one and the twenty-eight will hit. Okay. And Is that counting your flank? I think that even the eighteen with the flanking won't do it though. Alright. So after the first swing you realize that the creature is um the first one that connects, you realize that the creature is no longer in its collective, as it is bloody. And the other ones are not, but it is still standing for now. Okay. Okay. Anything else for Vesper? Uh, yeah. This guy needs to make a will save. Oh, you're right. Now, let me double okay. check that. That's. It's pretty high roll, so it probably succeeded, but... Um, yeah, no, it would have pilot. succeeded, because the DC is only 16, and he rolled a 16. Okay, yeah. yeah. All right. Because its buffs would have been deactivated, so some of the bonuses are gone, but that's okay. Okay, so then that's it for Vesper? Yeah. All right. So then it is... This creature... Just going to just try to heal up a bit. And then this one, which is going to do the same. And then it is Dranic's turn. 